All right, so we have a thermochemical equation here, and they're going to ask us some things about the energy involved. This reaction says you can take zinc sulfide and react it with oxygen, and you get zinc oxide and sulfur dioxide, and you release a certain amount of energy. This amount of energy assumes that you're using these amounts of chemicals. So this means if you roast two moles of zinc sulfide, you'll get 878.2 kilojoules. Or you can think of it as for every three moles of oxygen that you consume, you'll get this much energy. Or for every two moles of zinc oxide you produce, you'll get this much energy. You can set up a lot of different ratios here. So let's see which one they want. How much heat is released when three moles of zinc sulfide three moles of zinc sulfide reacts. Excess oxygen is code for, there's plenty of oxygen, don't worry about it. You've got all the oxygen you need. Just worry about the zinc sulfide. So, we have this that they've given us, and the problem, now that we know we're talking about zinc sulfide, we can get a little more specific here. The reaction here tells us two moles of zinc sulfide will get you 878.2 kilojoules. So one of the ways you can set this up, and there are several, is a cross multiplication. You can say if two moles of zinc sulfide gets me 878.2 kilojoules, notice I dropped off the negative because we don't need it for this, then in the question there's three moles of zinc sulfide will give me what? And you can cross multiply that. You go 3 times 878.2 divided by 2 and that comes out to 1317.3 kilojoules. That is one way you could do it. Cross multiplication works great. I highly recommend it. Another way you could do it is you could say I've got three moles of zinc sulfide, there we are, times, and you make a ratio out of the ones in the reaction. The reaction says you get 878.2 kilojoules for every two moles of zinc sulfide. We're setting it up this way so that the moles of zinc sulfide cancel out. And when that happens, the only unit that's going to be left is kilojoules. How do you solve this? You go 3 times 878.2 divided by 2, and guess what? You get 1317.3 again. So there's two perfectly good ways to crack this. Another one that we ca can use is there's a formula that says the energy from a reaction equals N delta H. Now, like with the MC delta T formula, there's a lot of different symbols you can write here. You can put Q for quantity of energy. You can put an H with subscripts on it to say the heat from whatever kind of reaction. I just use an E for energy. I think it's simpler. The point is, this is total energy. This is the number of moles of whatever chemical is reacting. And this is a delta H for a specific chemical. So if we use the formula, here's what's going to happen. E is our total energy looking for that. Our number of moles is 3. 3 moles zinc sulfide. That's our N. Now here's the catch. This delta H is not the same as this. And I'm sorry for this notation. I wish these didn't look so similar. This is a delta H per mole. And to get it, you have to divide both, you have to divide 878 by 2. This is saying you get 878 kilojoules for every 2 moles of zinc sulfide, and the little jump you have to make there is divide this by 2 because you're interested in zinc sulfide. You say, okay, that actually means I'm getting 878.2 divided by 2 is 439.1 kilojoules per mole of zinc sulfide. 
If we were interested in oxygen, we would have taken this and divided it by 3. But for zinc sulfide, we divide by 2, and that gives us kilojoules per mole. This is the number you put into this formula. Again, I'm sorry that these delta H's look so similar. It bugs me, too. You do get used to it. And really, what will save you here is paying attention to the units. This E is total energy. It makes sense that if you're doing moles times kilojoules per mole here, the moles are going to cancel out, chunk, chunk, and you'll get an answer just in kilojoules, and that's what that's what it should be. If you do moles times, if you just use this number and did moles times kilojoules, you'd get a weird unit that wouldn't be total energy. It wouldn't make sense. So whenever you use this formula, remember this is a number of moles. This should be kilojoules per mole, and if it's not, if they just give you kj, it probably means they've forgotten a step where you should be dividing by coefficient. You'll see me do this many times in the upcoming problems, so I hope that'll help you get a groove for it. And if you do it this way, of course, you also get 1,317.3 kilojoules. So what I hope you take away from this is there are a number of nice ways that you can solve these problems. You can use N delta H if you like it. If you don't, there's many other ways to set these up that will work great also. And in this case, you can say they're all giving the same answer, which is good stuff. This delta H is listed as negative, which means energy is released. And I didn't carry that negative in any of these calculations. I know that energy is being released. And I, if you're giving one of these questions, it might be good in your finished answer to say released, just to make sure that that's clear. In this problem, they already said heat is released, which is kind of them saying, we understand that the energy is released, not absorbed, so don't worry so much about that as about the number. We could ask you a question where we say, is energy absorbed or released, and how much? And in that case, please be very clear in your answer about which one it is. OK, let's see if we can do this again. Same reaction. And they're still talking about zinc sulfide, and they still say there's excess oxygen, but now it's a much smaller amount. They're saying we have 0 0.023 moles of zinc sulfide. Um, I'll set up all three of these again just so you can see them all, and you might, you might be deciding right now which one is your favorite method, so we'll give you a chance to see them all in action. If you cross-multiply, you take these two numbers out of the reaction and you say, I get 878.2 kilojoules for every two moles of zinc sulfide. But in this case, I don't have two moles of zinc sulfide. I have 0 0.023 moles of zinc sulfide. Sorry, the word moles should be in there. And that'll give me how much energy? If you solve that by cross-multiplying, 878.2 times 0 0.023 divided by 2, I get 10.0993 kilojoules. That's your cross-multiplication method. And now I'm going to scooch that off to the side because I need space. Um, the other one was using a ratio, or almost like a conversion factor here. That way it would look like I have 0 0.023 moles of zinc sulfide. And this reaction says, I'll give you 878.2 kilojoules for every 2 moles of zinc sulfide you have. So we write that 878.2 kilojoules for every two moles zinc sulfide. How did I know to put the Kj on top and the moles on the bottom? Because I want moles to cancel out. I want those moles and those moles to vanish so that I get an answer that's just in kilojoules at the end. And I'm going to not even do that on the calculator. I'm just filled with confidence that it's still going to come out to 10.0993. And finally, if you use the formula here, we've already got our delta H. We know it's 439.1. We found it before. So we can do energy equals N delta H. 
energy equals n delta h. n is 0 0.023 moles. Our delta h is 439.1 kilojoules per mole. I, I should be saying moles of zinc sulfide, sorry. I'm, I'm kind of a stickler for that. I've, I think it's helpful and important, especially in complicated questions. Moles of zinc sulfide cancel out, and when that's over, you should again get 10.0993 kJ. So there's at least three ways to solve these problems. There are probably others. If you have a method that you think is valid and you just want the teacher to have a look at it, send them an email. They'll be happy to check it out for you. And uh, yeah, as long as you're getting those results, you are probably fine. They give us one more question about this, where you see what the difference is? There's a new thing here. We know that it's uh, 439.1 kilojoules per mole is the delta H for our reaction and it's moles of zinc sulfide, so we're going to need that value. The new thing is, in the first two examples they gave us the moles of zinc sulfide, and here they did not. They gave us mass instead. So, okay, if we have moles, can we, if we have a mass, can we get moles? Yes, we totally can. Number of moles is mass divided by molar mass. Our mass is 223.9 grams. Our molar mass, out comes the periodic table, zinc is 65.41 grams per mole, sulfur is 3207, so our molar mass for this stuff is 97.48 grams per mole. Divide that out, and da, 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 I get 2.8. 297 moles of zinc sulfide. You know what? This answer is going to have four significant digits, I think, so I should probably carry a few more places here to avoid getting gouged on that. Instead of 2.297, please pretend I said 2.29688. That should be enough. I think I did the first two examples without thinking about significant digits, and that was not good of me. I'll try to tighten up about that. So we'll go with the formula for this one. E equals N delta H. How many moles? This many moles. Delta H, 439.1. And that gives us 2.29. 688 times 439.1 equals 1008.56 kilojoules. Okay, to four significant digits, that would be 1009 kilojoules. Also, in this question, uh, they, they don't say how much heat is released like in the other two. In other words, they're not taking it for granted that energy is released. They want us to say what the enthalpy change is. Energy, this is an exothermic reaction, so it is releasing energy, and to show that you can either write minus 1009 kilojoules, or you can say, if you prefer English to math, you can say 1009 kilojoules released. Either one of these should be fine. Of course, if it's a numeric response problem, you're going to have to give the minus sign, but Either of these is a clear way to express it, and this might even be a little clearer. So when they aren't, when the question doesn't give away what direction the energy is flowing, your answer probably should, just to make sure that you're being thorough.